Hey guys, before we get into the episode here this week, I want to let you know about something we just launched over at SawyerTronMedia.com. It's our very first Kickstarter. It's Steel City Startups. It's a magazine show we want to do. Go find out about it at SteelCitySTartups.com. Back it, tell your friends, and uh, stay tuned here at SawyerTronMedia.com. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time of the day is you're listening to this or watching this, you are partaking in Insert Coin to Begin Presents Let's Play. If you are unfamiliar with the formatting of the show, it's a short show. What we do is we spend a set amount of time answering three questions that are submitted by us or other people with the rest of the time being spent on what we like to refer as the boss fight, and that is the big question for the week. So, let's get started. As usual, the very first question is, what are you playing? Joining me this week is Bobby F. Town and Riz, contributors to InsertCoinToBegin.com. Riz? Yes? What are you playing this week? Uh, this week's been pretty slow for me, um, but right now I'm doing Max Payne 3 on for multiplayer purposes. Uh, you don't know Jack on Facebook, really good, really good Facebook game if you want to just jerk around there. Uh, Jetpack Joyride brings me a lot of satisfaction when I'm on the toilet, and a little <laughs> bit of the uh, demo challenge, which we'll be getting into later on. All right, Bobby. Um, I've been pl on va I've been on vacation two days of this week, and I I played a lot of Skyrim. I went back to the world of Skyrim. I was gonna start. I started a new character. Um, got up to level thirteen, and then decided that I can't really do much, and I don't want feel like going through the whole game again. So I went back to my old character, and I'm um, pretty much kicking ass with the old character. Uh, joined the Thieves Guild finally. I didn't join the Thieves Guild in the first game, so I decided to do that and. I, I love the Thieves Guild. I even tw changed my Twitter avatar to the Thieves Guild logo. <laughs> uh, I finished Mass Effect 2, finally, and I'm going to start Mass Effect 3. And I've been playing the Avengers game on Facebook like it's crack. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, as you know, if you listen to the show, if not, each week we do a, a challenge presented to the group by another member of the group, or even you, our audience. Uh, last year, we got into a really big discussion about uh, games last going... Last week. I said last week. Going... Uh, video games going completely digital. Uh, no physical media whatsoever. And we didn't get to a challenge last week. So you had the week off. You're welcome. <laughs> this week, however, uh, Riz presented the challenge of Bloody Trapland which is available at bloodytrapland.com. You can get the demo, give it a shot. Um, so that's this week's challenge. Be sure to go play it. I, myself, this week, uh, I played a Kinect game called Haunt. Um, Star Wars Kinect. Uh, I actually got around to doing the Galactic Dance-Off. Oh, no. Um, if there's no video, it didn't happen. Oh, it, it <laughs> happened. And I'm, I'm thankful there's no video because I am terrible. I am or a, it's not real. I am bad, bad dancer. Video um, GTFO. <laughs> <laughs> Fine, I'll have to have Sword hook you up with a video or something. Um, but uh, and then I did. Uh, I went back to Modern Warfare Three. Oh, nice. Um, <laughs> which is a bad game to uh, put down for a really long time and then go back to. Yeah. <laughs> because you are terrible. If you put the game down for like a month. And don't play it, and then you pick it up randomly again. Because all, all the sharpshooters are still <laughs> online playing. You're going to get yep. destroyed. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's what I got going on this week. Cool. So, on to the next question. Um, recently, it's been announced that uh, these really famous musicians are working with really famous games uh, to do soundtrack. Um, Trent Reznor is working on the new Black Ops game, and Paul McCartney is working on a game with Bungie, or not a game, but a game series uh, that's codenamed Destiny right now, um, with Bungie. Uh, because of that, what uh, composers or what musicians do you think are appropriate and should be uh, utilized more for gaming soundtracks? Bobby? 
Um, there's a band out of Chicago called I Fight Dragons. They're a nerd rock band. Uh, they use chip tunes, which if you don't know what chip tunes is, it's like NES sounds. Um, and they're really neat. They have really neat songs. And uh, they did, they even did a Power of Love cover from uh, Back to the Future uh, in chip tunes, which is really neat. And another band that I like uh, is the Killers. And I actually have a cool story about the Killers. First album, my friend and I were playing Mario Kart Double Dash, and we we timed it where the Killers album took the entire length of a race, full course, all the courses in Mario Kart Double Dash, and it timed perfectly. We finished the last song finished on at the end of Rainbow Road. It was weird. Uh, before before we go on, I would just like to point out that uh, I'm very familiar with I Fight Ro- uh, I Fight Dragons. Mm-hmm. Um, we actually interviewed them before a MC Front a Lot show here in Pittsburgh a few mm-hmm. years ago. And it was right before they got signed by a major label, and their song was used for a WWE pay-per-view yep. mm-hmm. song. Um, find what? The interview is over at uh, sorgatronmedia.com. Um, but it, it's the original I Fight Dragons uh, group before they dropped uh, Laura. It yeah, was yeah. the uh, the <laughs> she played the power glove. Yeah. <laughs> so um, she she was she was a good singer too. Yeah, she was. Um, all right, Riz. I like to go mainstream on this one. Um, to me, Dave Grohl from the Foo Fighters. I think he would be a great composer for like anything, uh, either movies or video games or stuff like that. But there's one name I I think we have to mention. And I don't want to mention it because it's eating away at everything I love. <laughs> Do it. Say it. Sk- Skrillex. <laughs> Skrillex and uh, anything with dubstep is popular. And I'm surprised. I'm not sure if it happened yet or if it's going to happen or if I'm just talking right now and it's dying a slow death, which I am. So hoping for. Have you ever actually sat down and listened to a full dubstep song? No, I no. Yeah, you you have to. If that happens, do I, you like I don't go really have Tron? to. Do I or the the world of Tron? <sighs> Fine, I, I will listen to dubstep. That that's your your second. That's challenge. my challenge. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Come back next week and tell me that you listen to an entire dubstep song. Um, I I went uh. I didn't go mainstream um, because mainstream people often have the opportunity to have their songs in uh, Madden or uh, big rappers usually get it in um, Need for Madden. Speed games uh, in Madden. So, I mean, they, they get the opportunity. They just often say no. Um, but I, I went that uh, like uh, Jonathan Colton did for the Portal games, I would like to see other uh, nerd musicians be used. Uh, MC Frontalot, MC Lars, Whitey Cracker, uh, things of that nature uh, to be used more prominently in uh, video games. Those MC- are... What's that? MCP pants. Right. Um, Alright. If given the opportunity to do so, Riz, yeah. would you play as yourself in a multi- multiplayer game or RPG or something along those lines? Well, this was one of my questions. Um, when I when I did, because I'm doing Max Payne 3, I did an article about Max Payne having a contest that where your face can be s- imposed on their next DLC. But I was thinking about it, and it would feel weird to see your face on a game. Like, a, a, your real 3D imposed face on, on someone else's body. Um, yeah. especially if you're like, if you think you look like something, some someone or something like not better than you actually do, then it would look weird. But it, like, instead of like just superimposed faces, I have myself created uh, likenesses for WWE games, uh, sports games, and others that actually do have customization. But I do kind of, uh, let's say, fan like be more 
less be less realistic with what I do in that game because I just want to look big, you know? Right. Right. Fair enough. Bobby? Uh, no, I don't think I would be a good MMO character. I, <laughs> I don't really play a lot of MMOs. Um, I think the only one I played was Guild Wars, and I didn't really even do much with that. Um, I I, view, I made myself in a WWE game, and I was a jobber because I didn't look the part or anything. So I made myself lose intentionally. But yeah, oh, no, I, I don't really see myself in, in, a, in an MMO or anything like that. I don't try to steer away from my, my look generally. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I would in a heartbeat. Um, either, especially in like a, a Grand Theft Auto type game. I just think it'd be funny, like, take uh, San Andreas, for example. <laughs> like, the gang wars of that. I think it would be hilarious if I was running around, uh, taking out all these gangs, and pretty much <laughs> running the neighborhood. I, 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 can, I, I can see you doing that, John. I, I, I just think it'd be funny to run up into the jail and grab the, the, big, uh, the big rubber pleasure tool and run out in the streets a picture of me going up to random people and just smacking them with it. <laughs> but I mean, it, it, I think it would add a whole new aspect to the game. Hmm. So, all right. On to the final question of this episode. Are you guys ready? We all love it up? Yes. Okay, Prestige. Prestige all over you. <laughs> <laughs> what game or games do you think should be a staple when introducing a new generation to video games? Uh, and what I mean by that is if you come across a child uh, that doesn't have much experience with video games and you're trying to spread the love, what games do you think you should start with? Riz? Uh, let's see. First of all, Super Mario 3, one of the, the, the best game of all time. Start with that. Um, if they want to do like a platformer type thing. Um, for If they're about, you know, older than a child, like a teenager or something, maybe start with God of War or GTA or something like that. Or if they're really into sports, Tech Mobile or Mad. But if they're like, if they want to do something, I feel like if I really wanted to start them off on a game, just go with Street Fighter. It's not it's not as gory as uh, Mortal Kombat. It's not as uh, deadly or whatever as Mortal Kombat. It's still, but it's still that good game that you can sho- shove around and probably kick some ass in it. Cartoon violence. <laughs> Car- yeah, cartoony violence. Okay. Without without blood. Rated Y seven. All right, uh, Bobby. Um, my our friend of the show AJ uh, was being. I mean AJ were talking about this last night, and um, if I ever have kids, I'm going to introduce them with Nintendo. I'm going to start them properly, and work their way up Super Nintendo and all that stuff. Uh, Mega Man Two is a good good game to show them because it's it's challenging, it's fun. It's it's not that difficult as not not a, definitely not as difficult as the first Mega Man, which was near impossible. Um, another game would be just to show them would be Shadow of Colossus, of what a video game could be. Um, it's a beautiful game. It, it would teach them like lesson. It, it it the game teaches lessons basically. Um, Skyrim would be another one because I'm addicted to it. And you could pretty much do anything you want in that game. Travel around. You don't have to like play violent all the time. Uh, and Red Dead Redemption would be another one, which another way you could like show them like the beauty of video games. Just a wide open thing where you could do whatever you want. You don't have to like be vi- show them the violence in the game, like tying people to railroad tracks and stuff like that. But you could show them like just the scenery and riding a horse around, roping things. Stuff like that, I think, would be a good introduction to a, to a next generation gamer. Okay, see, I, I took a different route than you guys did uh, as far as this question went, um, and this actually plays in. Uh, 
I will actually be teaching a new generation about the history of video games. Uh, Pregnant in, Chachi? No. In, <laughs> no. Uh, in August, I've been asked to do a uh, presentation in August at a public library in Pittsburgh. Awesome. Um, cool. On the history of video games. And so my mind has been really ev- uh, revolving around that lately. Um, and honestly, I think when showing someone or introducing someone new to video games, I think the best method is to start at the very beginning Mm -hmm. and then, and then hit each step along the way. Mm -hmm. Um, so uh, my list is, it's pretty, pretty long. Um, but, uh, I started with Pong and then, uh, Tetris, Super Mario Brothers three, the original Zelda, uh, link to the past, Ocarina, Twilight princess, uh, Final Fantasy VII, and then an, an, early, an early Final Fantasy would probably be included. Final Fantasy X. Uh, shut your mouth. <laughs> um, and then, uh, like, Final Fantasy III or Final Fantasy II would probably be included in that list as well. Um, and then I would show them something from, like, the current console, just so they can see that we went from uh, two white paddles on a black background bouncing a square ball back and forth to the um, amazing graphics in uh, just say like uh, and it's not exactly appropriate to show children uh, this type of video game but like Call of Duty oh yeah I, I mean, just it's the comparison. It's perfectly fine to show violence like that, Chachi. <laughs> to <laughs> a very small child. Yes, yes. Let's let's <laughs> Start have a ch- them young. Yes, let's no, have a child. No, they have a no, nightmare Russell. about being shot because the <laughs> the jackasses on Xbox Live are entirely <laughs> too good and shoot you when you're not paying attention. Um, but no, I I think that uh, if you're doing something like that, then you need to stress the fact that these things have come. Uh, it's such a long way. I mean, you, you've come from the simplistic graphics on a, a seismograph of Pong to the not-so-simplistic, uh, ultra-detailed graphics of Call of Duty or even, like, a, a sports game like Madden or something. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I think if you're going to do it, you need to do it. You need to go big or go home. Mm-hmm. What? What, Silent One? You are here. Turn your mic on. No, I need, I need to ask you a question. Turn your mic on. Okay, what's up? What's up? What is your thought on this particular... Like, how would you handle it? Uh, yeah, I'm not on the camera. <laughs> uh, the, the, the fan... The, well, kind of the same way. Like, I, I think uh, I would take them step by step. Like, the kid's going to get a Nintendo in his room before anything else, you know? Or, well, actually, more likely, what's going to end up having is he's going to have one of these. He's going to have an iPad, you know? I mean, he's going to have an iPod Touch because... uh, And then if he wants something more than that, we will have the Nintendo there for him, you know? (laughs) Or have something that at least will play Nintendo games. It's like, hey, this is how Daddy grew up on games, you know? Right. Uh, And, and, you know, kind of have that same experience. I don't really want to push him all the way back to Atari... Because they'll probably just hate video games at that that's, point. Yeah, that's kind of my idea. But then it's easy to have stuff like, you know, like I have down here, I have the Atari right. controller with like 10 games on it. It's a nice sample. Right. You know? I, I'm not saying it's, force the kid to sit there for hours playing Pong. No. I mean, <laughs> like half a game. Because I doubt they'd be able to sit there through <laughs> here, a whole go check game this out, anyhow. You, know? yeah. I mean, you never know. A little kid with the attention spans. We'll see what, you know, uh, you know having... You know, my kids are going to have the the kid section of Netflix to scroll through. Right. So we'll see what their attention span is going to be. Um, oh, now is like what Monopoly is to board games. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's, exactly. So, but no, it, I think it's going to be stepped through. Like I'm, not, I'm. They're going to have their iPod Touch or iPad or whatever is the Google thing goggles. That, I mean, I'm not giving them five hundred dollar iPad or anything. They're going to have my third generation back iPad. You know, is what's going to end up <laughs> happening. Uh, but no, I, that's going to be their Game Boy. You know. Because I, I don't think I, the Nintendo DS, I don't think you're going to be buying one of those for your kids anymore. Unless they really want Mario. And they didn't grow up on it like we did, so I don't think that's going to be a thing. You don't so, think console gaming is going to matter? I, no, I, well, I think in the long run, it's going to be the kid having his own screen and his own... Uh, I think I think what's important is the touch. I th- cause the, 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 touch. Kid, the kids... <laughs> don't get me started. <laughs> um, because the kids are going to... Oh, I just dropped my iPad. 
and I'll be buying another one. one. <laughs> oh, I wanted to buy the new one anyways. Okay, it's good. Um, but no, I, I think I because kids pick up on that easier. I, I think it's going to be the point where they're going to do touch games and we hand them a controller with uh, 16 buttons or be like, <laughs> Me, <laughs> you know. Like, so, what do you do with this? I think that's going to be more of the issue as, as kids grow up on this. I mean, you know, we got to see the evolution. We got to see. I had to sit and command line myself into a, a game of Doom, you know, uh, or or blow on the cartridge. Where it's, oh, you could be oh, really man. mean. I could be really mean. You could yes. be really mean and make that kid sit there and play uh, adventure or. <laughs> that could be bad. That could be bad. Yeah. Uh, or he would be good punishment. But I, I'm telling you, what they're going to end up getting if I can exit out of this is uh, here's my list of games, and I'm loading up uh, Donkey Kong or whatever right there. You know, it's going to be slow or whatever. But or Wrestle Fest. Yeah, well, whatever. Um, but <laughs> I mean, Fest, that's going to be Kong, it. I, I'm not. Thing. It's not going to be a stack of games anymore. And I think by the time my kids run, come around, they come to that age to notice. Oh so, no! So you're doing it wrong. I'm doing it wrong. Yes. I'm, I'm, in the ev- in, in the unlikely event. That uh, someone I'm with pops out a child, and I have to uh, pass on the the video game playing legacy of my family to a child. No. Uh, it, they will know what the hell a controller is before I give them anything with a touchscreen. <laughs> well, I, I pose a, a secondary question to you, Chach. Okay. What if your kids hate video games? That would never happen. As soon as you hit stop on this recording, I'm going to get out. I was going to say, I mean, a lot of times the kids rebel against what their parents are into. Listen, you listen. Know? But, but, but. Listen. I as soon as you, watching you, Dad. As soon as you hit stop on this recording, I'm crawling around that desk and I'm smacking you. <laughs> How dare you put such a curse on my family? <laughs> Good you son of a. I will Shut. beat you. Yes, child sir. needs a hug now. Man, what if my child doesn't like video games? What the hell are you smoking? What are you on? I learned it from watching you, Sorg. Man. <laughs> no, actually, if you start them young enough, a child will like anything you tell them to like. You would hope so, right? Yeah. Or they go through a yeah. phase and they just hate everything that they liked the last five years right. when they get to the teenager. I don't even like video games. I'm going to actually play outside, Dad. <laughs> We're like, what is wrong with you? <laughs> And that's how we go to your incident. room. Exactly. You are grounded. <laughs> exactly. Well, that's that's the point of it. Every game is going. Every game is going to like change in five years, anyways. Right. So you'll have that new aspect to it. Like, oh, I want to play this game. It's always there. Yeah. So. All right. You're so probably safe. Yeah, I, I probably am. Uh, first off, I don't plan on having any kids, so I don't think that's going to be an issue. But I mean, in the event that it happens. Uh, the video games aren't going anywhere, so the child is going to play video games because their friends at school are going to play video games. So I mean, it's always going to be there. Um, all right, so that's the uh, the boss fight. Uh, reminder: this week's challenge is Bloody Trapland. You can get the demo at bloodytrapland.com and interact with us on Twitter at insertcointb. Let us know what you think of the game. We're over on Google Plus. We are on iTunes. We are on YouTube. We are on Facebook. We are we everywhere. Yeah, we have Google Plus. I have Google Plus. So, I mean, you can contact us. Go over to insertcointobegin.com to read the articles that we post daily, every day. Every New day. News. Uh, we stay up to date just like everyone else does. I'm Chachi Says on Twitter. You have at Riz IUP on Twitter and at Bobby F. Jamestown. Awesome oh, and you can also turn tune in to uh, Awesome Cast for uh, this week's discussion where we talk about the Ooh Yeah. Ooh Yeah. And uh, hear what we have to think about that. And that's at awesomecast.com. And we're all just a big part of the Sorgatron Media. Uh, Circle of happiness. Yay. No? No? Group hug. Group hug. Group hug. Um, so that's all we got for you this week. Uh, for Riz, for Bobby, I'm Chachi Says, reminding you to keep it nerdy, nerds. We'll see you next Group week. Hug.